Welcome everyone. Welcome back to our second night of our Soiree Harvest Festival here. We're so blessed to have all of you on board and, and paying attention and, and being clued in here. This is a big week for us, culminating with Friday, uh, our fantastic Friday. We've got a great lineup of, of speakers and, and fun stuff to, for you to be bidding on and really supporting our mes me mission here at Divine Mercy Care. Um, it, for those of you that aren't familiar, if you didn't join us last night, or if you're a little n new to who we are and what we do, Divine Mercy Care, is sole purpose is to serve, inspire, and unify life-affirming medicine uh, around the country and really around the world. And we do that in a variety of ways by helping Tepeyac OBGYN here in Fairfax, Virginia. It's traveling the world and, uh, and talking with people and, and meeting them where they're at and helping pregnancy centers really understand and those that support uh, life-affirming medicine, the best ways to go about that and to unify really the, the, the life-affirming medicine. And we've done that through pro-women's healthcare centers where we have 12 pro-women's health care centers throughout the country that are rallying around the standards of care. So that's Divine Mercy Care really quickly in a nutshell. My name is Will Waldron. I'm the executive director here and I'm so blessed to be working with all of you. There's a team of people and volunteers that, that are behind all this. This is such a big week for us. Normally we have a gala. It's got 500 to 600 people in a, in a room and it's got a whole different feel. But it's 2020 and we're moving forward. We're really excited to have you on board. Um, today is Teachable Tuesday, and we've got a wonderful testimony from Father Bresnahan, and he'll share that in, in a moment. But I do want to highlight for you guys, really to emphasize, to go down in the comments section, there's a link to registering. So just to register for this, it'll keep you in the, in the loop of what's going on this week. It, it'll give you updates on different uh, silent auction items that you may have bid on. Um, it's, a, it's a really wonderful, very intuitive, very easy program to kind of walk through and talking about We've got an amazing amount of, you know, silent auction items that could probably fill an entire Christmas list for any family. Uh, we've got over 100 items, and I want to. I'm going to go over a couple of those with you today, but I, but I'll quickly talk about from the high high point. We've got some really unique avocados, farm to table, right out of California. They're going to be shipped to your house if you're the high bidder. We've got some unique um, pick of the litter. We've got a we've got a kitten that that uh, eight week old, eight, eight week old kitten. You can come pick out. Um, uh, there, there's a myriad amount of dolls for uh, anyone who's got a 10-year-old or younger in their family. Uh, uh, it's going to be great. So uh, there's also some great things for mom and dad. There's, uh, there's vacation homes. There's golfing experiences. There's um, a myriad of things. So please go check that out. You've got to register first. That'll help get you in. And then we'll move forward uh, with that. Again, like I said, Friday is the big culminating event, 7 o'clock. Put that on your calendar. It's going to be an exciting event. we got a wonderful program. We've got Father Pat Linghug, who is wonderful, spoke last night. So if you haven't seen that, you can backtrack through the system and through our webpage and find his video. Really inspiring. But we've got a whole new special segment of him on Friday. But also, Lila Rose, a, ma a massive champion for life and a wonderful leader. And we're just so excited that she's going to jump on board with us. We've got some other live auction items, some fun things. Yeah, deep sea fishing out in the, the Chesapeake Bay. I should say deep bay fishing out in the Chesapeake Bay. Uh, take seven of your friends and have an overnight stay, go fishing. Everyone comes back full and, and, with, and had a lot of great memories. We've done it for the past few years, and I'm excited to host it again. Um, and uh, we've also got um, a lobster and steak fest that's been hosted by Lobster Mania and the Kenna family. We're very blessed to have them on board. We've got um, Tony's Pizza in Fair Lakes. They're hosting a dinner with Dr. B. Again, these are nice, wonderful ways to kind of bring your family and some of your friends together, maybe some of your neighbors, whatever it, it takes to bring everybody together. And, uh, and I think we're all a little hungry for that this in, in 2020. Um, we also have... Uh, some fun things uh, coming up here, too, uh, for the rest of the week. Tomorrow, uh, Dr. Savakovich will talk about Wellness Wednesday. And on Thursday, Dr. Wachowski will talk about uh, Throwback Thursday, with kind of a little bit of a history of Tapiak and Divine Mercy Care over the years. But uh, let me do this. Let's, I've got a couple things here I really want to show you. These things are fascinating. These were donated to us. These are wonderful pieces that we've got. These are, are made of olive wood. They're from the Holy Land, and we're really blessed. The detail on these are really impressive here. Uh, Jesus and the cross. I mean, I, I, my first thought went to, if you have that, uh, you know, friend that uh, 
or, or mom and dad or anyone that in your life that that really could appreciate this i think this is a wonderful piece as you can say it's significant in size it's probably about 22 inches tall it's really a wonderful piece i'm going to show you a couple other things here we've got this one i really kind of think would be neat for that pastor or priest in your life um this my mind goes to this immediately um on, on really, you know, washing of the feet, Christ washing the feet of his disciples. And I just think it's a wonderful piece. Again, it's significant. This is beautifully carved out olive wood. And uh, we're really blessed to have these donated and be a part of our summer soiree here, our harvest soiree. Uh, we got some other interesting pieces here, too. We've got some some china here from the uh, the Holy Land. Um, We've got the tree of life here represented in uh, the smaller bowl. And then we've got nice Bethlehem, little skyline of, of Bethlehem, the small town itself. So some wonderful pieces here. There's one more piece I want to check out here. But these are all, you can, you can look at all these as well online. Um, again, these are all silent auction items. These are things that you can bid on. You can come after and, uh, and give your best gift. Uh, give your best, um, uh, you know, um, effort towards this. And uh, again, all this goes towards our mission. All right. This is something that we are so fortunate to have. Uh, incredible detail here in this, as you can see. It's really a wonderful uh, piece that we've got here. Um, so blessed. But anyway, I just want to um, highlight a, two more pieces here. This wonderful vase from, from Jericho. This is an amazing. The, the engravings that are on this, the detail work, the mother of pearl that's inlaid, inlaid up above. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece. Certainly a conversational piece. Um, it's really, really unique for sure. And I just think that's uh, very special. Again, from uh, straight from, from Jericho. It's a wonderful piece. And uh, again, it's on our silent auction items. And you can take a look at that. Each day, night this week, we're going to be highlighting a few of these things and kind of, you know, Wetting your appetite, encouraging you to go into the silent auction again, but you have to register first, and really hopefully you uh, can support us. We've been so blessed to have these items uh, donated to us, and uh, fortunate to have you joining us and being a part of this. Um, but I really want to just, without any further uh, ado, just uh, offer this time really to Father Bresnahan and his testimonial. So enjoy that, and I'll be right back. Everybody. My name is Father Ed Bresnahan. I am the parochial vicar at St. Andrew the Apostle Catholic Church in Clifton, Virginia, and a dear friend of the Tepeyac Center. And I'm so grateful uh, to, the, to give just a little bit of a, a teachable Tuesday here uh, as, we, as we begin. You know, a lot of people come up to me and they'll say, you know, Father, in the pro-life ministry, in the pro-life world, you seem to be only focused on pro-birth. Uh, and and wh while I understand that there always seems to be a focus on the babies, I remember very vividly going to a March for Life just last year and saw a beautiful sign. And, you know, they always have very funny signs. Some are hilarious. Some are very poignant. Uh, this one just simply had a picture of a mother holding her child. And it just said something so simple. It said, love them both. And I always thought that what a beautiful sentiment, the idea of loving them both, that a pro-life ministry ought to be able to love both mother and child. And it really resonated with me, especially because that's my story. When I was, my biological mother had all sorts of struggles and problems. She was an alcoholic, a smoker, um, hung out with the wrong crowd, and really couldn't figure out, I think, how to manage life the way that I think they always tell normal people that they should, right? To be able to go to college and get a degree and do all of the things that you're supposed to do, live your life. She was struggling with all of those things. And really, when she found out that she was pregnant with me, was in a place of incredible vulnerability. It's the kind of vulnerability that most people say, why worry? Why bother yourself? End this pregnancy and move on with your life. You're not in a position to be able to care uh, for this child. 
and she struggled. She was not in a position to care for me and a, a place of real fear. And I credit her, obviously because I'm alive today, but I credit her with making the incredibly courageous decision to be able to choose life. She chose me. Uh, she didn't know me. She didn't know what I was going to be like. She didn't know what kind of a person I was going to be. She didn't really know who the father was. And, but it, she still chose me and said, I'd like to have this child. But she was afraid. And she turned to one person that she knew that she could probably count on. She turned to her brother. And she asked him and his wife if they would be able to take care of me. And God bless them, but they said yes. And so I was adopted within my own family. And my biological mother gave me to her brother. So it's a little weird growing up. My family tree looks a little all over the place. But it, what an amazing moment to be able to, what an amazing thing to be able to say that I have life now because my mother, who had so, made so many bad decisions in her life and had been at the wit's end of her life, and who everybody would say, don't have this child, don't do this. Someone loved her enough to be able to say, yes, I will be able to take care of your child. And so I exist today because of that. Fascinatingly, as I grew up and got to know her, I always knew her as my aunt. And it was always a beautiful relationship. She'd come over. She never sort of tried to do anything more and try to parent me or anything like that. She just loved me. She loved me for who I was. And I loved her. She was my aunt and is my aunt. And watching that relationship grow, I was able to watch something amazing happen. About four or five years after I was born, she finally put away alcohol forever. She began to make a lot of changes in her life um, that began the process of healing. She went back to college. She actually got a degree in accounting. And today, she teaches people who are late to their degree program, late to college. Maybe they took a gap year. Maybe they enlisted in the military. Maybe they just, in their life, they went down a different path and they wanted to come back and get their degrees. She taught them, she teaches them today how to make financial decisions. She helps people who weren't able to help themselves. What an amazing thing. And so she has been an inspiration to me all these years. She's 35 years sober. Um, she teaches other people and holds them accountable. And all of it happens because the people around loved her. They loved her. She loved me. And in the middle of that love, that mutual love, there's new life and an incredible opportunity in my life to, to be able to listen. And of all of those things, that's where God began to speak to me and say, you know, I think you should be a priest. And so my ability to love and care for and serve other people through the church has happened specifically because she chose life. And I think today um, I'd like to say that I serve as hopefully a, a pretty good example. But I think the point more than anything else is not just, oh man, what an amazing story, what an amazing conversion, what an amazing experience of God's love in life. But I think even more, and maybe not even more than God, <laughs> but certainly even more than just what looks like what it, what it appears on the surface is the fact that people looked at both of us and saw us as human beings. They saw her in the middle of all of her struggles and saw her as a human being and loved her and gave her the care that she needed to be able to support me. And they looked at me even before they knew me, uh, even, before I, even before I had made a grand appearance in the world and said, we love this child. And I think being able to support organizations and being able to provide for uh, organizations that really care for and make a particular effort to love mothers and love their children is the exact thing that we're looking for in this world. We have a world that is so filled with hate and division and so, much, so many people are struggling. And at the end of the day, they're just basically asking some simple questions. How, do you care, how can you care for me? How can I care for you? And a very fundamental thing is how do we love a person who is at their worst and how do we encourage someone who is at their best? How do we help people in those situations? Well, that's why uh, this, this beautiful organization exists. Tepeyac Family Center is an opportunity and a place where people can love mothers and their babies. Where, where people can love and provide for and provide authentic and caring medical advice and medical care to help support both to help mothers in difficult pregnancies, to help mothers who might be at wit's end, to help mothers who might be uh, struggling with any sort of, any, any wherever they're coming from, or really just to help a regular mother. Anybody who is going through a pregnancy ought to give a place like Tepeyac a chance uh, and be able to say, to be able to, to be able to support this kind of institution. 
So this is the reason why I, I care so deeply about places like Tepeyac OBGYN, because they provide authentic care for anyone who comes through the door, but also in a particular way, provide for those people who might not otherwise have a chance. And they take the opportunity to be able to say, we love them both. We love them both. We love the baby that's, uh, we love the unborn baby. We love the person who's, uh, we love that child who's about to come into the world for whatever they could become and for whatever God has in store for them. But also we love their mother. And we wanna be able to provide that loving care that says we're with you when you find out you're pregnant and you're scared. And we're with you when you deliver that child and you, and you see the joy of that person. And you see the joy of that new life in, in, in your arms. And they provide the same care onward, uh, onward through life. So it's not just at the beginning. Uh, it's not just a pro-birth, uh, it's not just a pro-birth argument. It's a pro-life argument. Because if we can't figure out life at the very beginning, if we can't figure out life at its most vulnerable and its most innocent, then we're going to have a lot of trouble trying to figure out the rest of it. And so in a particular way, through my story and through the work of places like Tepeyac OBGYN, God is doing some amazing work in caring for the most vulnerable in our society and in looking for those people, looking out for those people uh, who might otherwise feel that there's no one there for them. At the end of the day, the whole point is to love them both. Our Lord loves us deeply and truly. And if God is able to love us deeply and are most vulnerable, imagine what he can do with what, you, with what we're able to provide for him. Even the smallest thing can help. Volunteering, offering whatever service you have, time, your talent, your treasure, it's a great thing. And all of it works towards the service, most especially the service of mothers and their children. Again, I'm Father Bresnahan, and I'm grateful to see you, and I'm grateful to, to share this work and my story with you. I would be remiss if I didn't plug some of the things that we do at St. Andrew the Apostle Catholic Church in Clifton, Virginia, on our website uh, and our YouTube channel, which is standrewclifton.org. Uh, and on it, we, we provide our daily masses. We provide a number of different things like vocation talks and other sorts of, uh, other sorts of spiritual help. But I also offer a fireside chat every Monday at 7 o'clock p.m. where you can tune in and ask me anything, anything and everything. I answer all sorts of questions. You want to know uh, capitals of random countries. You want to know history of popes. You want to know a little bit about church history. You want to know why, um, why Catholics believe what they believe. Here I am for you every Monday, 7 o'clock p.m. Offer happy to answer the, even the most random questions you provide. And uh, you can find it on our YouTube channel, which is St. Andrew the Apostle Clifton, Virginia. Like and subscribe. Thank you so much, Father Bresnahan. What an inspirational talk. And we're so grateful for you to share your story with us. Um, quick reminder. Put 7 o'clock on, on uh, Friday on your calendars. Make sure uh, you register. Share with your friends. This, this is a great way. You want to get involved in the pro-life movement? What a great way. This is by far the most impactful way. Every day we're helping women who otherwise could not afford this type of health care at Tepeyac. And we're really trying to spread the word across the country on centers a lot like Tepeyac across the country. Two more things here I want to just bring to your attention. Two more of these beautiful olive wood carvings. Again, these are silent auction items. Anyone can go right in and, and, and register. Um, and there they are. You've got uh, Jesus and the disciples fishing. And we've got uh, Noah's Ark uh, with Noah there and uh, several of the animals. Uh, and then one last thing um, I want to bring your attention to, and that is the best of live. Best of Live is a great way, $100, you get a chance to win some of these, uh, th you know, very expensive items, whether they be uh, fishing trips or, or big dinners out uh, with multiple people. This is a great way. For $100, you take a chance on that. And we still have five more books for Five of the Pedaling Hug. For the next five people who actually register and then buy a uh, Best of Live ticket um, and, and, and check out will have a, a book come in your direction. It's a wonderful sp uh, spicing up the marriage uh, father from Father Peddling Hug. And I'm um, really excited to have him and all of our speakers this week. And thank you so much to you and all that have been a, a part of this mission. This is a big week. So put it on your calendar, share with your friends, and 
Join us again tomorrow night at 7. Thank you very much.